Good morning, everyone. It's Alicia, and welcome back to my channel. And if I'm being a little quiet, it's because it's Friday morning, and so it's my husband's morning off, and he's still sleeping. I'm going to wake him shortly. But I wanted to come on and say hey, and respond to some of your questions, specifically about this painting. Whoa, am I getting it? Here we go. Much better job of getting it in frame. So, a few of you have asked, what's with the painting? Well, it's an interesting story. Um, I think a lot of you just assumed that it came with the place, but it didn't. This was actually a special gift from my husband to me. Um, and the reason that he gifted this to me is because it's a weird story. So it's so interesting that so many of you asked about this painting. Um, there was a gentleman when I first came to visit Tel Aviv many years ago, and he was a punk rocker kind of style person uh, who I met in Tel Aviv. And over the years, I guess, he became homeless. He was a hairstylist, and because of a series of mental health and addiction issues, he ended up losing his house here. And I have to tell you, Israel has amazing social services, like far better than Canada even. So acquiring social housing is super easy. Um, not easy because it's bureaucratic and anything in Israel that involves bureaucracy takes a long time um, of your patience, I guess. You have to line up, you have to wait for hours, and by a long time I mean you have to sit in an office for hours the first time. But it actually doesn't take a long time. It's not like Canada where you can wait for five years on a waiting list or eight years on a waiting list. No, it's not like that. If you need social housing here, you get it. And you can get it rather quickly by our standards. Uh, probably in under, well, well under six months. You know, I was just watching a documentary about England where people are waiting nine, ten years on waiting lists and not getting it. Now, folks, like in under six months, I've heard of as fast as within a few days. So I don't know if that's true because I haven't investigated if you can really get it within a few days, but I hear it really can be that quickly depending on where you are in the country. In Tel Aviv, which is one of the most desirable cities to live in, it probably takes longer. And my understanding from people that work in the government is it can take up to six months to get you properly housed, permanently housed. They will find you emergency housing, like right away, but permanently housed, like in an apartment that you can live in forever. So it's not that there wasn't housing available, and it's not that there weren't workers on the street constantly trying to encourage him to seek housing. Um, but for mental health reasons, uh, for reasons that he had told me quite a bit about in depth, when he became homeless, because he and I would bring him a coffee, we would talk, or I would watch him engage with other people, um, I learned that he chose not to take this route. And he disappeared one day. And I broke my heart. And I haven't seen him since. So I felt like he was one of those forgotten people. And my husband knew that this was something that upset me very much. And it just turned out that an artist who lived in the area had also known him had also befriended him and had also noted his disappearance and had painted a series of portraits of him as a memory of his existence. And my husband had one done for me so that I would have it forever. And as his illness progressed and as his homelessness worsened, he became more and more tattooed. And so until his entire face was almost covered like a mask, and you can see that in the painting. And so it is a reminder to me that, that everyone is fragile and everyone needs support and that no one should be forgotten. And it's my constant moral reminder of that because it's so easy for people to just disappear and easy for us, those of us who are not in that position to just move on with our lives, right? Life is busy, full of pressure. I have kids, I have grandchildren. I have a lot of things I worry about. My mother, I have an aging mother, I have an aging dog. But in all of that, I have to also remember that there are people that need care and need to be remembered and not to forget. So that, folks, is what that's about. All right, moving on from that very uh, heartfelt topic, um, I want to say how many of you knew and stopped by Miss Rosita's channel yesterday and saw that she did her first ever VR response first like first story first ever video period she had this incredible haul 
I don't know where her thrift store is, but folks, I know it's in Florida. Um, but wow, wait till you see what she hauled. I'm not going to ruin it because you got to go over there and take a look at her video. But folks, it was her first ever video and I know she was very nervous about that. Do you remember when you did your first video? Can you remember when you did your first video and what that felt like and how nerve wracking it was? Mine wasn't that long ago, folks, so I remember. And I remember Lily came on and she was like, hey, great video. And I was like, really? Oh, phew, because uh, like, that was nerve wracking. Okay, folks, drop on by Miss Rosita and let her know what a great job she did. Like, I think when people make that transition from being people that are watching, right? And then they go and they make their first video, it's so scary a move. And they just need a little bit of encouragement. That's it. You know, Kathy talked about that yesterday. Kathy went from like when she first stepped out as a shy person and people were really encouraging to when they gave her constructive feedback and it was kind of painful because she was like, uh, they hate it, they hate it. And then she was like, no, they don't hate it. They want to help me get really good at this. And so they're giving me feedback to help me. And she was like, oh, I can't take this personally. And she like grew from it. This is a process, folks. We know that, right? And when we feel supported, we're really open to constructive feedback. We want it. I ask you guys for it all the time. I always say like, guys, how do I make that crappy print? It's about to happen this week. Guys, look at this stuff. How can I make it better? I know it's not perfect. It's nowhere near perfect. And before I send it off to Miss Danielle, I want it to be as good as I can make it. So give me that feedback. But we know when we're first starting how scary this is. And she did such a great job. So I'm putting her link below to that haul video. Please take a second. It's an amazing video. You're going to be wowed by what she got. It's going to be super enjoyable. So I'm not really even asking you for a favor here, folks. I'm telling you, you're going to be like, she got all that? She got all that for $5? Yes, she did. And she did a great job showing it to us. So drop on by Miss Rosita's and let her know that so that she can feel comfortable continuing to make videos. Look, some people never make videos, like my friend Carmen, okay? And that's just because they're not video people. It, it puts a lot of pressure on people to make videos. When someone steps out of their zone and starts to make videos, it's important that we as a community support them. We know it is a tough transition. So I say, let's go do it. Plus, Rosita's was great. And this haul, wow, fantastic. But more than that, Miss Rosita Brown, you did a great job on your very first video. And you should be really proud of that. And I, I hope that you're going to do many, many more videos. And I have all sorts of other things to share with you. I got a few alley packages in, but unbelievably, none of them are from Miss Alina. None of them are from Alina Crafts. And I know she was one of the first to mail out to me, folks, so I don't know where her package is. And it's the one I'm excited to show you. But I'm also excited to show you some of the other things I've been getting in. One of them in particular, because I've been waiting for it for Danielle's project and the swap so I can't wait to share it with you later today. It's also market day which you know is crazy here. I told you that it's artisan day, it's shopping day because it's Friday because it's about to become the Sabbath this afternoon and so it's gonna be nuts and it's Cape Pride in Tel Aviv weekend which is a whole big party here folks. Uh, in Jerusalem it's a much more somber human rights based activity for reasons we can talk about but here in Tel Aviv Oh my goodness, is it one big party. So who knows what kind of videos I'm going to be showing you. And I have a little hauling to do. And I also have, uh, let's see, I also have like 10 happy mail packages to mail today. So I got a lot to do. So there may be a whole bunch of interesting videos later on. I'm going to be out and about. Who knows when I'm going to haul. You know when I'm out in the city. It's a dangerous thing. And I have been cooped up sick. So <laughs> watch out, folks. Um... And that's it. I am feeling better. Thank you so much for your well wishes. I'm so grateful. And I hope each and every one of you have an outstanding Friday. Take care, folks. And I'm sure I'm going to see... Oh, one last thing. My brain is like a sieve this morning. I need more coffee. I do. Several of you now have asked me for a tea and or coffee steaming tutorial. I'm happy to do it. I'm not joking, though, folks. My making space here is limited to a bistro table. In my sofa, which we know is dangerous because I'm a messy maker. Oh, I'm a messy maker. So to be making on the sofa, risky. So I just need to figure out the logistics. Give me a couple of days to do that. And I suspect that sometime 
over the weekend I'll figure it out and by next week we'll have a tutorial so stay tuned and that really is it for now folks take care and have a great Friday bye for now